This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. Welcome to the show. My name is Shannon Morris. It's your weekly dose of technology. Hello, everyone. Mm. We're so excited. We are <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm stealing Club Mates. Yes. That's We're right. We are back from, from epicness in the Lost Coast. Oh, yeah, that was fun. We'll have to come back around and talk about that later. But we have returned we have to civilization where there is, in fact, cell service, which we were quite thankful for. Wow. And we have, um, we're going to have a little bit of an abbreviated show today just because I have to boogie to the Mojave Desert. Because you have something awesome happening. I Can you tell us? I, I don't want to save it. Oh, I'm going man, to, I'm going to so Edwards awesome. Air Force Base. Ah. I'm oh, going to yeah. see the Dryden Research Center, which is just renamed to the Armstrong. I thought you wanted to save it. I think, <laughs> I'm not saying why I'm going to NASA, but uh, stay tuned for a report oh my uh, God. on next week's show I'm so for jealous. that. It's going to be really it's fun. Amazing. Are you uh, going to get to fly a spaceship? That's what they, they said. Darren, <laughs> you know, we've got all these astronauts, and we've trained them for years, and they're so good at flying the space shuttles that we but don't no have cows. in service. But they're we need you poops. to pilot the... <laughs> Soyuz. I don't, don't want to pilot a they're Soyuz. Just, so NASA, still make me a spaceship, okay? Yeah. And when I say me, I mean like all of us. Like take our tax dollars and, and spaceship. As in your pseudo, spaceship. pseudo make us a spaceship. Yes, please. Because mm -hmm. I have um, that route. And, and then you got to configure, and then you want to do a make install. And clean. you might need to change the CH mod. Yeah, you might. Chamo. Hey, <laughs> speaking of chmods and all of that good stuff, we got a, great, a bunch of great feedback we do. on last week's show. Yeah. And so I thought maybe we could just dive into some of those that have been piling up. Okay. Because there's a bunch of good stuff, starting with an awesome tweet that I got saying, hey, dude. At want... Michael Finley. That was from him. And he says, at Hack5, at Hack5, Darren, may want to turn off SSL version 3 on your social server. Hashtag insecure. Oh, Duh. yes. All of the non-secures. <laughs> so uh, why is this insecure? What's going on? The Poodle attack, October 2014. Oh, oh, oh. The uh, Poodle t uh, attack was debuted. Google released details of the attack. It is basically a thing that would allow someone to do a little man-in-the-middle goodness if they were able to drop your session down to the older SSL v3 protocol, which you could if you're the man-in-the-middle. You can do some little trickery oh. to break the negotiation of TLS. And in which case, there's a bunch of awesome attacks in which you can sniff out the plain text goodness. So Oops. thus negating the whole purpose of SSL in the first place. Yeah. The workaround. That's a slight problem. As you can find, uh, the workaround is basically to disable SSL v3 on your servers. And so, but can you still use the other versions and it's OK? Yeah, so it's, it's called a downgrade attack. And um, it, it really basically depends on the browsers being able to like support the older versions and not like say, no, I will only speak to you with the most secure version. Yeah. And this is something that has plagued security for a long time, which is the whole like, well, we want everybody to shift into the direction of using the newer, bestest protocols. But we also implemented all this old stuff that doesn't support it yet. Right. So we have to be backwards compatible for a time. Okay. This is a really fun time to be uh, in the browser scene because a lot is being shaken up between uh, Google and Mozilla oh, as yeah. far as like phasing out, not, not phasing out, but deprecating HTTP, you know, uh, using the, the stick instead of the, just the carrot when it comes to HTTPS. So I, I do believe that we will see, you know, in the encrypt the web, I think we're going to see um, a lot of movement in that here real soon. As SSL certificates are about to get revolutionized, if Mozilla has anything to say about it. Uh, <laughs> turns out, though, disabling this is really easy. And uh, I'll, I'll link in the description where you can just jump to your web server of choice, Eng Nginx or uh, Apache, which I'm running. Oh, OK. It's just a matter of bloop, 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 So you type in a few commands, those. and you're good to go. You just have to pop them in those configs. OK. Yeah. So that's all. It's good stuff, but that led to Brian's that? comment. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to, I got it. I just got back from the, and now I have to, yeah. Well, you know what? You're not allowed to sleep here in the Hack 5 warehouse, <sighs> well, yo. Well, maybe we should get like somebody from the community to be like, I want to be a sysadmin for the Hack 5 network. And then we'll like crowdsource that thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Why not? I mean, we got the Thunder Kitten Assault Force on IRC. Why not? We also got a quote or a comment from Brian who said, you may want to use this to finish setting up SSL on the Friendica server, and he linked us over to Mozilla's GitHub. This is really cool. If you haven't checked this out, it's the Mozilla SSL configuration generator, which makes it ridiculously easy to specify all sorts of stuff, like, hey, I'm using Nginx. Give me a config. Oh, cool. Hey, I'm using Ap Apache. Uh, I want HSTS. Boop, just check the box. Now Dude. you got it, right? You mean I don't have to write this myself? No. 
I love generators. That generators feels like are cheating. awesome. I know, right? <laughs> and I didn't, That's awesome. You probably get your term papers generated too. Um, <laughs> th this is pretty cool because it'll allow you to enable etch, eh, eh, words HSTS, which is all sorts of good stuff. It is HTTP strict transport security, oh. and it uh, thwarts some of some of the HTTPS sniffing attacks that we have previously seen. Oh. Although again, it's fun cat and mouse on that front, which is really cool. better for all of us in the long run because it makes encryption better. So yes. break all the things, so you can fix all the things. Break all the things. Yes. Break all the things. Mod Drink all the things. All the what now? Hmm. So, can you tell me a little bit about this hackerspace that we heard about from Jeff? Okay, um, Jeff is a friend that I met at one of the most epic, I say one of the most epic hacker camps in America. <laughs> There's epic. only one hacker camp in America, sadly, and that is uh, Torcon, and it's only every other year. But mm -hmm. I've seen him both times that I've been, and it's been amazing. Jeff is one of the movers and shakers between, uh, behind Ali Mega, which is a oh. makerspace and hackerspace in Olympia, Washington. So this is really just a shout out that's very specific to people near Olympia, Washington. But if you didn't know, there's a hackerspace in your backyard. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to go during Hack Across America despite wanting so badly to visit because they are making so much cool stuff in the way of home automation. Ooh. You can check out their stuff over at homeautomationhacking.com. Uh, they have a, a bunch of really cool projects. Yeah, uh, they've got a Kickstarter going and they're looking for some help to, to make this thing uh, oh, come awesome. true. Yeah, so I just thought I would, you know. That's so great. Give a little shout out because there are so many hack, in fact, hackerspaces.org. If you didn't already know, there's probably somewhere nearby where you can go and meet like-minded geeks who want to break out soldering irons, write some code and other good stuff. So do yourself a favor, head over there, meet some new friends, you'll thank me later. I love hackerspaces. Yes, they so are amazing. the best. Can we have a hacker space in um, our lovely place here? We're thinking about doing some open houses. Oops. Right? Oh, oh, I'm breaking things. Which we need to, I guess, get your feedback on. <laughs> Did I mention this episode was going to be a little uh, uh, laissez-faire? Random. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that it would be really fun to have some open houses. Right? Where just Because cool? we essentially have a hacker space here between all the 3D printers and the laser cutters and the, you know, the, everything. I can't even think all anymore. All the soldering kits that yeah, we Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we have a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, you were just doing some Geiger soldering yes. stuff later. Not ready more, yet. Next more week. On, more on that later. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, I don't know, maybe just hit us up, feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you guys think. We did a very successful series of Bay Area Hacker Brunches, so maybe we could kind of roll so that cool. into Bay Area Hacker Barbecues, right? Ooh. Hey, what do you think? We get like a barbecue out at the... Out in the parking lot? Open up the roll-up gate Dude. and then, you know, make some brats and burgers and, That's an you awesome know, hack idea. some stuff together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, french like fries. Fun. Now I'm super hungry. Tacos. <sighs> and we also tacos. got a tweet that I wanted to shout out. This is from Anthony Russell, and he said, I hate trying to think. I just want to watch random Hack 5 episodes. So my gift to the Hack 5 crew is randomhak.com. Oh, my gosh. This is so <laughs> great. And it is, in fact, a random hack. It's a randomizer. And you just, you just click on randomize me. And... Whoa, Ep season one, oh. episode six. Oh man, let me try that, that one again. Oh, not found. I gotta, uh -oh. I gotta talk to him. Season one, episode five. Season eight, episode 21, augmented reality. Oh. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh. Yeah, Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark Three. backtrack virtual oh, machines. So, old so it turns school. out not everything we did was evergreen. <laughs> um, but this is good stuff. Oh, no, no, actually, this is really good. The ShmooCon 2012. Ooh, sandboxes. Um, yeah, IP6. Yeah. In fact, I, all the IP6 hacking still legit. Like, it's good stuff. dude, th there needs to be more adoption really on that front. That's really cool. I have to hand it to him. That's really rad. And I kind of, uh, thank you, um, Anthony Russell. Russell. And I, I wish that our, <laughs> our uh, episode scheme, our URL scheme was a little bit more standardized. But I'm sure you <laughs> figured it out. Thanks, thanks for a random hack. <laughs> And from Bucky, he says, Hi, Hack5 peeps. Just watched episode 1810 and awesome stuff with Jitsi. Played a little with it before, but did not know that you can pull off some hosting server goodness. Ran into some details I thought I would forward from the browser perspective on WebRTC. Did stumble across an interesting post, and it's from softpedia.com, which shows a WebRTC no-no that was a little troubling. In the browser, it evidently vomits out your public IP and your internal LAN IP via certain times of 
request made. Even when using a VPN, the browser blahs this information out. You can test it over at the GitHub address, which we'll also put in the show notes. I use a WebRTC disable plugin for Firefox right now, which is the workaround. Happy, vulnerable WebRTC disable plugin. Not sure if there's a fix yet, and that was from Bucky. Hey, so Bucky. That, yeah, that goes exactly along with what I had mentioned when we were first researching with Jitsi, how there was that thing that came out back in January about the issue with uh, your public IP or your private public IP being yes. So yeah, and your private IP, and that's kind of the the interesting thing here because it's always been that your public IP when you go to a server is visible to that server because how else would it know how to talk to you? Now, when I say your public IP, I mean the last IP before you hit its server, yeah. right? So if you're going through a VPN, it would be your VPN service provider. If you're going through Tor, it would be your Tor exit node. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's people ask all the time, like, how do I anonymize or how do I spoof my IP address or get rid of my IP address? I'm like, no, but you can't. that's not how it works. Yeah, you can't. You, you have to have an IP or you're not going anywhere. Right, um, because you won't get, ever get a request from whoever the website is. I mean, technically, you could you gotta, write a malformed packet you a handshake. that has, yeah, exactly. You, well, <laughs> when it comes to UDP, and I'd tell you a joke about that, but I'm sure you wouldn't get it. Uh, you hey, could, <laughs> I might get it. You might. and that's That was the, mean. Good, well, you might not. <laughs> Well, okay. maybe you should so give the, me a idea, <laughs> the idea is Jerk. that uh, you could craft a packet. You could use Scappy or some other packet crafting thing to um, to send out a packet that's got Take like a this. malformed return address, but you would never get a response because you're not sitting there listening on the other end to, to find out. Anyway, what people normally mean when they say spoofing their IP is going through something like a VPN or Tor or I2P or one yeah. of those other anonymizing services, but which you can't fully masks who you are personally, right? Well, here's the thing. WebRTC, part of the spec, part of how it was invented, and one of the cool things about what it does is it allows uh, different web services to communicate with each other even if they're on the same LAN. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, we have an awesome network here at the Hack5 warehouse. Right. In fact, we have several. We have a Hack5 internal network, which has you know Paul and Shannon and myself, and we use it to collaborate, and that's good. And then we have a totally separate lab network where we can play with stuff mm -hmm. that might be totally getting owned, and that's cool because <laughs> that's a separate network. And then we have like now like a totally different you know Zen-based server cluster thingy running right. cool things like Frenica and Jitsi and all of that. Now. One of the rad things about Jitsi is that, and, and any WebRTC-based thing, is that it will allow you to collaborate even if you're on the same LAN. So if you and I are on the same network, we don't have to go up to the internet and back down mm -hmm. for us to do real-time communication a la webcam We can just go webcam from sharing. one computer to another pretty much. Yeah, and then it's super fast. Yeah. Because it's just over the LAN. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to use any uh, internet bandwidth, and thus we're going to get, I mean, we're on a gigabit network here. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, but that is, that's kind of a feature of how it works. Now, some people are like, hey, this isn't cool because maybe I was not intending for both my, in fact, here's the demo of it. You can see your local IP, and I can see, yeah, that's my 10.73.31. That's here local at the, uh, at the warehouse. Yeah. And our public IP, that's our IP address here at the, uh, at, at the Hack5 space. Okay. And now everybody knows, and it's totally cool because... It is, and the the novel thing here is that it can find your your both your internal and your external IP address using a method called STUN, which is the session traver, uh, session traversals utilities for NAT. Um, man, if I had known that we were going to get too much into NAT, I would have gotten a whiteboard out. <laughs> Essentially, suffice it to say, it's a way to get out of your internal network and out to the bigger online network. Oh. The thing is, this isn't really a bug as much as it is a feature in the sense that WebRTC relies on this to be able to traverse NAT and to be able to communicate with other things on its LAN. Like Dropbox does a similar thing. Now, it's, I guess, I guess this is one of those things where it's like unintended. Yeah. So the fact that the browsers are leaving WebRTC on by default mm -hmm. and allowing these things, allowing any website to query, uh, both your public and, you know, well, obviously public, but your private IP address and all of those things, it's Could a little bit end concerning. Up being dangerous for you. I mean, 
you know, for a lot for, most, for a lot of people, they're just going to find out that they're 192.168.1. whatever because they get like a Linksys router at home or something like that, <laughs> and that's not going to tell them anything. But yeah. you know, it is a concern if you're trying to protect yourself through a VPN. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, for the privacy conscious people that may have been like, "Hey, what is that now? Is this thing is exposing my stuff?" Which is why you know it may be one of the reasons why Mozilla hasn't adopted it fully. Mm -hmm. I mean, WebRTC is an open uh, is you know Google's behind WebRTC, which I have no idea how much that plays in with Mozilla's adoption, but yeah, um, yeah I think that turning it off by default would be the best way. Okay. And we've talked about some different plugins that you can use to like limit like what browser features are right, enabled yeah. by default. And this is actually a conversation that's going on right now as Mozilla, for instance, is talking about deprecating HTTP and saying only certain features, for example, WebRTC would be one of them, are available over HTTPS. Um, so I think for now, yeah, just running a plugin mm -hmm. the, that Brian mentioned okay. would be pretty cool. I mean, also, you know, if you're going to go that far, you might as well be running no script anyway, or not script. Okay. So, yeah, it's just it's just good to know. But I don't think it can be looked at as like a vulnerability. It's it's a feature, <laughs> but you might not want it all the time. So I would hope that the browser it's a kind of sort of feature. Yeah, I would just hope that the uh, browser makers would make it like a checkbox where you have to every time allow yeah. mm -hmm. access to WebRTC stuff. Uh, and if you want to play with it, the code is up on GitHub. It's WebRTC IPS. And you can see it's it's very little amount of code. I mean, that's it. That's Jeez. it to fetch an IP. So anyway, we'll have links to all of that in the show notes. Interesting. So if I still want to go to Jitsi on the Hangout, or our Hack 5 Hangout, mm -hmm. I can do that. I'm just going to have to be aware of that feature? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, but that's fine. Actually, the way, the, um, none of the Hack5 network servers mm -hmm. are physically touching the internal Hack5 network anyway. Yeah. So it used to be when we ran one for testing before we had awesome bandwidth, uh, it was great because it would allow us to have an internal service where we could have our own Google. Actually, one of the reasons we even found Jitsi is because, uh, like when Seb was here, we really rely on Google Plus Hangouts to be able to collaborate when he's in his office, I'm in my office, we're going over code, we want to screen share, we want to collaborate on building epic Wi-Fi pineapple goodness. And it was frustrating having DSL and not being able to communicate. And we're like, why beholden ourselves to Google anyway, where we have to go up to the internet and back down mm -hmm. when we're like, we could literally just shout across the room to talk to each other, but we want to be able to screen share more easily uh, and, and see each other on the webcams and make funny faces and all that. And so that's why we found Jitsi and we can run it internally without ever having to have it touch the internet. And similar to that, now that we have a public instance of it running at hangout.hack5.org, and you can go there now and join the room Hack5 and say hi to everybody in IRC, um, that physically does not touch the internal network. Right. Which yeah. is good yeah. because that means that even if it gets popped, because none of the Hack5 stuff that we've put on the network, like we're saying like, oh yeah, it's perfect. You know, this is like total beta stuff. Like, in fact, I, I'm not even sure how much Jitsi Meet is even being updated these days. So... <laughs> You know, it may have just been a tech demo. We'll see. They're still on like the 1.0 something. Mm -hmm. um, but if that gets popped, it's fine because it's physically not even touching okay. our internal network here. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And, oh, should we take a break or do you want to keep going? <laughs> Let's take a break. And when we get back, we're going to hear from Matthew. It's that time of the show where we thank Domain.com because they have been supporting Hack5 for years and they want you to know that when that killer idea hits, it's time to snag yourself a domain name at Web Hosting Fast and you won't find a quicker domain discovery system and checkout process than over at Domain.com. You're going to get your website up and running in no time. And I've told you before why Shane and I love Domain.com, mainly because they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use, but mostly because they're a fun place to do business. You can tweet them at Domain.com and see what I'm talking about. And the guys over at Domain.com, huge fans of Hack5 for years and they want to hook you guys up. So get this, you get the coupon code HAK5 and at checkout you'll get an extra 15% off. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. I'm ready for some more viewer questions and maybe some comments. Like this one from Matthew, who said, I just wanted to respond to the episode about free network hosting. I used to watch Hack 5 when I was on dial up years ago. Oh my gosh, dial up. I just used WGET TAC T0 TAC C to download episodes overnight and watch them later. 
Hmm, that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. And you know what? I want to show the rest of everybody how they can maybe potentially do similar stuff except using Google's bandwidth and uh, get even potentially smaller files, smaller episodes of Hack 5 Aww. without us doing any work. You see, that's right. YouTube does a lot of this for you us. You too can YouTube. You too can YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're there now, haha. Um, oh boy. Check this out, right? I'm going to grab <laughs> okay. the latest uh, URL from the address bar here. Okay. Of uh, This is our latest episode of ThreatWire, so check it out. It is all good stuff about Patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Yeah, or just Hack5.org and you see all the good stuff. Anyway. So, uh, we've talked about YouTube DL before, before, right? Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. It's um, YouTube DL, and this is available for Windows, Mac, Linux. And if you give it the dash dash help, you'll see there are a ton of options. But let me just get you to the one that you're really going to want, which is, in this case, if I just go ahead and paste this URL, it's just going to download, quote unquote, the best version of it. Okay. But you can also... Uh, list the different formats that are available on any video with tac tac list formats. Cool. And we can see that there are WebM, M4As, uh, some more various resolutions of MP4s. We've got 3GP if you're really low on bandwidth. Look at that, number 17. It is a 176 by 144. M M yeah, 3 GP. GP. It's a Whoa. back when 3G was a hot new thing. It was like Jeez. a video format that's like ridiculously low bandwidth. I don't think it really caught on much, but okay. um, that is going to be a very small file. So if you are really crunched on bandwidth, you could then go ahead and tell it to download number 17. Uh, you know, similarly. And this is also, it kind of rolls in uh, with what Jason had asked, right? Yeah, he wanted to know if there's a way to download MP3s. Yes, and it doesn't uh, show up as just one of the formats available, mm -hmm. but what you can do is if you tie it in with, say, um, like trying to hit Control L to clear the screen, but it doesn't work because this is Linux. Machine. I know. Uh, <laughs> if you do, uh, if you have yourself a copy of FFmpeg, which is pretty easy to get, oh. you can do, go ahead and do extract yeah. audio and then set the audio format to MP3 and there you go. And it's going to go ahead and download, in this case, the dash manifest cool. and it gets a low res version and then it runs it through FFmpeg and in just a moment here, boom. Wow. And if I LS, I find out that I'm on Windows and LS isn't, and if I click, wow, I know there how to Windows. <laughs> and there we go. There is, and that's a really long file name. Oh, okay. But boom, there's my MP3. That and so cool. that was really quick and simple. And so there are some ways to get MP3s out of YouTube for, you know, so for your audio podcast listening. Don't that's awesome. use it to infringe copyright. That would be bad. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happily excited about this YouTube thing. I am happily excited about some Download all the videos. many good things. Listen, we've talked about all sorts of fun stuff on this week's episode of Hack 5. So if you want to leave a comment about any of those, please do so below. Uh, a like, a subscribe. Those go a long way too. If you haven't already seen on the sister podcast, we have uh, Threatwire and Metasploit Minute. And Shannon is doing an awesome job with uh, Tech Thing. And so, you know, just... Thank you for all of the continued support. Yes, HAK5.org is where we will always be, no matter what. So bookmark that now. And uh, let us know what you guys think about some ideas of possible uh, get-togethers. Uh, barbecues sound like yeah, fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm really Should loving this idea of some like, community-inspired, I don't know, events. You just want barbecue. I kind of just want some barbecue. Yes. Um, oh, oh, oh. HAKshop.com, of course. We can't forget that. Uh, we have lots of really cool items coming in there, so definitely check oh, yeah. it out. Oh, yeah. There's some new stuff next week. So yeah. check that out. As well as, what is it? Uh, oh, we're uh, now going to be listed on Diamond Club. TV. <gasps> no so, way! There we go. Yes. Uh, which will tie in with our live streaming stuff well, for when the episodes yeah, record later, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we should have that. And then Paul's That's building awesome. the IRC walls. So epic stuff is happening. I'll be back next week with a report from uh, Dryden, I'm sorry, uh, Armstrong, <laughs> Reese, Ed Edwards. <laughs> Edwards. One of those. <laughs> And I'll be back next week with some really fun stuff with a Geiger counter. Oh, yeah. I'm radioactive. We all are a little bit on the inside. <laughs> I'm Darren Kitchen. True love. I'm Shannon Morse. <laughs> Trust your techno lust. <laughs>
radioactive techno lust. <laughs> you know what it really is? What? Ghosts inside of you. Oh. Well, it's yeah. True. I ain't afraid of no ghost. It's ghosts inside of you. Matthew, that's a great comment, and you know what? I would like to add to that because I think that there's uh, some awesome ways that you can might even consider getting stuff. Stuff. <laughs> we have our blooper. <laughs> <laughs>